hello and welcome back to the channel. Uh, today I'm joined by Misty from Electrify America to kind of go over uh, how the business has grown and how the, they plan to grow in the future. Okay. Thanks for having me. So uh, first you want to just give, give us kind of a general overview on what the future plan is for Electrify America as far as I know there's uh, tons of chargers being added all yep. the time. Uh, how are routes uh, chosen? So like I know I-90 is one that I'm looking forward to yeah. finally getting populated. Yeah, no, it's a great question. Um, so we are looking to double our network in size in the next two years. So essentially, you know, uh, 1,800 chargers, um, charging stations, and nearly 10,000 chargers. Where we're looking to grow is really where the EV adoption is forecasted to be. So we we look at you know um, high city areas where you know EV um, transition has happened more rapidly, um, and then also travel routes, top destination travel routes, and that's where we plan to build. Obviously, we build at charging stations. Um, that EV drivers want to go. So you have to have a place to go to the bathroom, eat, grab a bike, grab coffee, and so desirable locations. For sure. Uh, well, with those locations, is there a plan to, uh, for Electro America, to ever go into convenience stores or lounges like that at charging locations, or they kind of want to stick to the charging or the ch chargers and let uh, kind of outsource all that? No, so in some cases, we've actually worked with. Um, you know, gas stations, for example, that um, Sheets is one example on the East Coast. Right, exactly, and where we'll build on their existing land. So it's, it's a, you know, win-win, where you have the land already there, and we can add a few chargers, you know, anywhere between four to 10 chargers. So yeah, that is definitely a business model we're looking at. Yeah, uh, on the recent road trip I was on, I went through Baker, and I think that's kind of like the best future. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Gas pumps, Tesla chargers, and yep. Electro America all in the same. And battery storage. And battery storage, right? Yep. Help with the grid. Yep. Yeah, exactly. We love Baker. Baker has definitely been one of our pilot sites where we've been able to test out our battery storage technology, but also we just installed our next generation uh, charger there. And so we're really excited that Baker is one of our first locations to get that charger. Yeah, I just got to use that. That's the BTC unit, right? That's correct. It's BTC at Baker. Okay, so how, um, how are kind of pivoting off of that, how are the chargers chosen, uh, you know, whether it's an ABB or BTC or, um, like for instance, I was just in, uh, right in the border of Utah and Wyoming, it was a new charger installation, but it seems like it had some of the older ABBs versus some of the newer ones I've seen. How are, yeah. how are they kind of curated for what chargers go on what location? Yeah. So our next generation charger um, really takes in all of the lessons that we learned from our early technology. Originally, we were working with um, you know, uh, multiple hardware manufacturers. We're now down to working with two hardware manufacturers. Um, and it's really based on um, the, the manufacturers that can provide us with uh, reliable, uh, strong SLAs. And so um, going forward, the next generation charger, we are taking the best technology with these manufacturers and only deploying those. So, uh, how, with some of the older units, you know, what is the the process with yeah. if it's if it has unfortunately been unreliable? At yeah. what point is it just replaced with a newer unit versus? That's a great uh, question. Or how is or how is yeah. repair kind of? Uh, well, like one of the things we have is um, two things I would tell you: a network operations team that works 24/7. Think of it as like a NASA command center. There's big screens. I think you might have seen it in Robert's earlier presentation, and they're monitoring the um, plug-in success, the how the charger is performing, there's that. Then you also have the roaming test fleet team that is going from charger to charger to do a multi-point inspection. Based on some of these diagnostics and what the di uh, data that comes back to us, we identify chargers that don't necessarily meet our reliability standards. And so um, right now, for example, we have a replacement campaign um, underway for 300 plus chargers. Um, and that's based on the data that we've been seeing of unreliability. And so they'll be replaced with the next generation charger. Okay. And so is that typically like a, a whole site will be taken down and replaced or it's yeah. kind of one at a time so, so yeah, there's exactly. still be reliability? Yeah. So what we're looking at doing is not taking down a site um, and it's for duration. So we might, you know, let's say this charging station has six chargers, we might replace three and then do the other three. So we're very cognizant taking down an entire charging station for an upgrade is sure. a disruption. Yep. And so right now we're working through how can we keep at least half of it up while the other ones are being upgraded and then when those are done, move over to the next set. 
Great. Yeah, I've, I've had uh, great experiences with Electric for America, especially when I have run into any sort of an issue. The customer service team is just Yeah, they're phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they work 24-7, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 3 a.m., you can call them, they'll answer. That's, yeah, there was, uh, when I first got my Volkswagen last year, I know there was uh, an upgrade being done, and I got, so I had a call, unfortunately, for a couple charges in a row, and I got the same person almost oh. each time. I was like, oh, I lucked out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. They know where I was going. So with that said, there was just an update I saw, because uh, I just road tripped out here from Denver. Yep. So uh, what was that update, or what, what do those updates kind of do? Is that for preparing for new cars that are coming onto the network, or yeah. is that for charger reliability? Or Yeah, so you likely received a notification from us about a um, software update being underway. We sent an email to our customers. We also put on our HMI screen. So one of the things that, you know, through these last you know five years, we've learned a lot about our charging uh, stations. One of which is um, really taking insourcing back in versus outsourcing. And so what, this upgrade was a, a software upgrade to really be able to own our own diagnostic system. And so um, there were some interruptions, um, but it's for the longevity of maintaining our charging network, taking back some of our um, software in-house was what you're seeing there. So we put our chargers in free vend, I, I so that. that way we didn't disrupt so, customers. The yeah. plug and charge experience, yeah. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> yeah. Uh, with that, is, is plug and charge, is that something that's on the manufacturer side that they yeah. still need to figure yeah. out, or is that a... Okay, kind of that's a great question. Out? So um, the manufacturers have to install uh, the software update for plug and charge. So we actually have quite a bit of manufacturers in our testing facility um, working on these updates for plug and charge. So our chargers are ready to accept these cars when they're ready to deliver the plug and charge. So we actually see uh, quite a bit of um, automotive companies in the next few months, you're going to see them releasing plug and charge software updates. Great, and so one question with that, uh, like in, in the case of like the Mustang Mach-E, yeah. um, their plug and charge, it works through the Ford app rather yep. than the Electro America app, which then does not allow them to receive the Pass Plus discount. Is there a workaround in the future to kind of bring Yes, absolutely. So we've actually worked very closely with Ford to make sure that after their free charging program is over that we can pass on the Pass Plus savings to them. So this is done through our business development team. It's feedback um, that we've heard and we absolutely want to support the Ford mach -E customers and obviously the F-150. Um, so we are working to be able to take that pricing and give it to the Ford customers coming soon. Great. Uh, I think that's pretty much all I have, so I really Great. appreciate your time. And, Thank uh, you. We're out here at the Fully Charged Live event in San Diego, California.